Hi everybody, my name is Yonatan and I'm a software engineer at Talk. and today I'm going to be talking about the web app that the Immigration Deportation and Res Refugee Task Force at Jai Hack Night built with ICER, the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. In particular, I'm going to be talking about how uh, we started working with them primarily as like contractors or service providers and transitioned into more of like a consulting role and how that benefited the project, the relationship with ICER, and hopefully, ultimately, the community we're both trying to serve. So who are we? Uh, in November 2016, Donald Trump was elected, and my reaction to this was, I'm going to be fine, but there are a lot of people who are not going to be fine. And as a resident of Pilsen, I felt like I am surrounded by people who are part of the immigrant community. I would like to be doing work that will help them. So I came here and suggested starting a group to help out with this and a bunch of people, some of whom are here, connected me with various organizations, a lot of different resources, uh, including ICER. Uh, ICER is a nonprofit that's been working in the sh Illinois immigrant community since 1988. Um, we, as part of our work, one of the volunteers who was part of the breakout group went to ICER and basically said, there's this group of people at Chai Hack Night, they're interested in working on projects that will hopefully help uh, the community you're also trying to serve. Is there anything that you have wanted to do but not had the resources to do that uh, you that we can do for you? Uh, and they said, we'll get back to you. And then in January, they came to us and they said, hey, we saw this amazing app by the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless called Streetlight Chicago. We would love for you to build something like that for us. We think it would really benefit our community. So we hopped on a call with them to talk about what they wanted to see out of the project. Uh, the first thing that they were hoping is that we would be able to help people find resources from uh, advocacy, or advocacy organizations working in the community. They also wanted to give users access to emergency hotlines and also just emergency resources. So one idea was that there might be a button where people could inform their family that they had been picked up by ICE or had a run-in with the police. Uh, another thing they wanted was to do some Know Your Rights education. And lastly, they wanted potential ICER volunteers to be able to sign up for and receive action alerts as part of this app. So we started out taking sort of a contracting or service delivery approach to this. And that's because the group felt, and I really felt that ICER are experts in the community they're trying to serve. They know what problems the community is facing. They know how that community accesses resources. They have all these relationships. We should be building what they are asking us to build. They are the experts 100%, and our job is to translate their ideas into something that we can put into people's hands. And uh, you can see on the left is the streetlight app built by the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless, and on the right is the first version of what we built, and they are very similar. <laughs> they are very similar because we were trying to translate more or less exactly what they asked into uh, into an app. So basically, it's an app inspired by the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless app. And at the bottom, we have these different use cases that they articulated to us in the initial call. Uh, the volunteer stuff is hidden behind more. And as we were working on this, we really started feeling like we couldn't make some small decisions about the app, like even things like which of these tabs should be highlighted when we first open this. And we realized that this was because we didn't know who our target user was or what problem we were trying to solve for them. So we'd actually been wanting to do some user research and trying to schedule that for a while. So when we sort of got stuck, we decided, let's just go to the next ICER workshop, ICER-affiliated workshop, and do whatever user research we can do there. And this happened to be a citizenship workshop. So on June 24th, Sana, who was one of the UX designers on the project, and I went to the citizenship workshop at Richard J. Lee College on the south side and chatted with uh, probably half a dozen, a dozen families. And uh, neither of us speak Spanish, so we were primarily speaking with the children of people, children and grandchildren of people who are there to receive services. And we heard things like this. We heard about this citizenship workshop on the radio at home. I Googled the event to get more details for my grandfather. And my mom has a smartphone, but she's learning how to navigate it. My parents look to me to help them find information and resources online. And generally, these patterns really held true across everyone that we talked to. The people who were there to receive services had smartphones, but they didn't know how to do a whole lot beyond calling, texting, and emailing. 
Also, not very many people had heard about this event online. They had heard about it on the radio, in newspapers, in church flyers, word of mouth. And lastly, we learned that ICER didn't have a strong name recognition directly in the community. These people had a lot of knowledge of the advocacy organizations in their neighborhood, but not necessarily ICER itself. So we went back to our original questions based on the user research that we'd done, and we thought, who is the target user for the app? It probably should be the young people who are trying to access information on behalf of their parents and grandparents. And also, what problem are we solving? We wanted people to be able to come to our app with a question and get an answer, and we wouldn't be able to do that directly. So we thought we can connect people with all the organizations that are already doing work in the community. So that was sort of our idea for where we could go with this. And it was kind of at this point that we transitioned from being service providers to consultants with ICER. And for me, this was a very uncomfortable transition. As I mentioned earlier, I basically felt like ICER are the experts and we should be just translating what they've asked for into a project. And to go in and sort of suggest what we thought would be good felt kind of out of place. But we'd been working on this project for more than six months. We'd done some user research. It felt like, well, let's have a conversation about this idea and see where it goes. So we scheduled some time with ICER to show them what we had built so far and what we'd found in our user interviews. And we proposed to them that we reorient the app to focus primarily on connecting people with organizations that can answer the questions they have. And I was expecting some skepticism about this idea, uh, but ICER basically saw what we had put together and said, this makes sense to us, what do you need from us to get this done? And it really highlighted for me that while they are experts in their community and what their community needs, we do have some domain expertise about how to build a good app how to do user-oriented design and UX research and things like whether it should be native mobile versus a progressive web app. And these were things that we had actually, by not bringing these up earlier in the process, were doing ICER a disservice by not sort of leveraging our domain expertise. So um, we went ahead and did a bit of a redesign. We simplified the task flow. We tried to focus it on uh, questions that people would come in with and helping them get connected with these organizations. This was a mock-up that we showed them in our initial presentation. Uh, we also ended up making the citizenship focused, and the reason for that was twofold. One was that ICER had actually given us a list of partners with the kinds of resources they offered in the initial version of the app, and that happened to be partners from their New Americans initiative, which is a citizenship initiative that they do. In addition, we'd done interviews at a citizenship workshop, so we had a bit more context about that. And lastly, ISA really emphasized for us that citizenship needs a holistic approach. It starts with community engagement, might lead into citizenship classes and uh, English classes, and ultimately can lead in helping people apply for citizenship, but it needs that whole spread. So it made sense to us that this would be a reasonable minimum viable product to launch with. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we built so far. Um, one sec. Sorry, Steve, I'm going to mess with your okay. configuration. Uh oh. All right, is, is this visible enough? I think that's, we can do that. Okay. Uh, so the top part you'll see starts with, I need someone to help me with. This is sort of the crux of what we were trying to propose, uh, what we were proposing to ICER, that we focus on connecting people with organizations that can answer their questions. So if we click on something like applying for citizenship, this pulls up a list of organizations that offer this as a service. So uh, the icons on the right indicate other services that the organization offers, and switching to something like classes can change the list to highlight only organizations that offer classes. I need to zoom out in order to get the next thing. And this is also visible on a map, uh, so people can see where it is. One possible extension in the future would be telling people the closest uh, organization to them. Um, but also, in, it was kind of emergent in conversations with ICER that there are questions that we can answer for people directly in the app. So one thing we learned from ICER and saw in our user interviews is that there are people who have tried to apply for citizenship before and then been deterred because of the fees associated with it. So ICER emphasized that it would be great to have a fee waiver calculator that they've already built in the app. So we actually link out to their fee waiver calculator 
so that people can have this question answered right away. And one of the reasons we decided to link out rather than rebuilding it is so that ICER can continue to manage this in their existing content management system or CMS. So, and then you can see at the bottom, we still have some my rights information uh, because that was very important to them to continue to include. So back over here. So what do we learn over the course of this project? The first thing is listen and trust the organization you're working with, but we have domain expertise and it's valuable to bring that to the table as well. It's just important to do that with respect and humility and also with the idea in mind that sometimes you'll disagree and like their intuition is the one that you need to be trusting because they are the experts in the community that you're trying to serve. Second, volunteer projects take a long time, so be patient. If you look at what we've built, if that had been designed, it's like a week or two of engineering effort full time. And we've been working on this for more than a year. And the, it's just hard when people are donating an hour or two of their time per week at most. And that's okay. Uh, the thing I'd emphasize here is that if you want to take on something with a large scope like this, uh, even if it's not going to be huge, it's going to take a while and commit to it for the long run. One thing to keep in mind is if you have an idea of how much time you can donate, communicate that to the organization or the group that you're working with so that the kinds of tasks that you can get are in line with what you're realistically able to deliver on. Third, don't be afraid to build something mediocre. This is kind of more in the general startup realm of things, but like we could continue iterating on this, continue making it better, but that whole time, it's not gonna be in anyone's hands and improving anything. And it would be much better to have this in people's hands, seeing if it's working for them, and then continue making improvements after that. So that's our goal. So what's next? The next thing we need to do is we need to settle on branding. ICER is doing a branding exercise to figure out how they wanna sort of market this. Is it gonna be part of the New Americans Initiative? Is it gonna be part of something else? That's ongoing. The next thing is we have to launch it. The goal is for this to be, uh, oh my God, I'm missing the word right now. Uh, Complement the work being done by existing organizations in the community. Uh, we're hoping that ICER will be able to promote it, also get it out through the organizations that are part of their coalition and then have it spread by word of mouth um, and just be a resource that makes it easier for these community organizations to continue providing resources to people who come to them to receive services. And then we have a bunch of ideas for how we could continue to improve the app. One is we could lean in more to the idea that this is a citizenship focused app. We could do things like build a checklist that people can check off for things that they need to bring to the citizenship workshop. Another thing we could do is build more of a flow around sort of taking citizenship classes and registering for English classes before applying. Another way we could go is that ICER has a huge uh, wealth of information about organizations that can provide low cost legal services to immigrants. And they have expressed interest in including this information in the app as well. So we could sort of expand the scope of what we're doing to continue connecting people with organizations, but organizations that do more than just focus on uh, applying for citizenship. We can also integrate with ICER's uh, content management system or customer relationship management in order to have these organizations loaded in dynamically. Right now it's all put directly into the app. It would be great if ICER could update this in their content management system without needing to go through us. And maybe it will involve you because the people who've been working on this have been working on it for more than a year and it needs some new energy, it needs some fresh ideas. And if you're interested in this, ICER has been an incredible partner in working on this project. And if you're interested in working with them and working to help the immigrant community, then totally come talk to me afterwards. There's a ton of interesting work that could be done. So uh, here are some of the main people who worked on the project. I'm at the top, Sana, who unfortunately is out of town, uh, set up all the UX research and did all the design for the new version of the app. Uh, Gabby, who's here, helped out with some of the building. Naomi connected us with ICER at the beginning and has done a ton of facilitation. Uh, and Betsy did the design of the first version of the app. 
Um, I also want to give a shout out to some people at Chai Hack Night. Nina Sandlin and Steve Ediger were incredibly helpful in like, getting started with any of this at all. Um, I don't know that anything would have happened if they hadn't connected me with organization and people and resources. I also really appreciated that Don Chartier did an extensive usability review of the app, which went into uh, a big wave of iterations on the UI and UX. And there have been a ton of other people who've contributed in big and small ways throughout the course of this project, and I just really appreciate that everyone's given their time and encouragement. Uh, so that's it. I think we go to Q&A now, but uh, feel free to get in touch with Sana or I. Um, what about translating in various languages? Great question. So um, I've been working with someone at ICER, and we do have translation into Spanish. I think most of this is done. <laughs> um, some of it flows a little bit funny because some of it is uh, longer. Some of this is wrong. I actually just got an email today with some updated translations um, now that I provided the whole app in context, which I probably should have done to begin with. Um, and I definitely have in mind that this could be extended into other languages as well. Um, that selector might need to change in order to accommodate more languages. But uh, the languages that ICER supports on their emergency hotline, I think, are English, Spanish, Korean, and Chinese. So I think it would be great to at least get into those four languages. Uh, not Arabic? Uh, maybe it was English, Spanish, Arabic, and Korean. I don't remember. How did you make sure your volunteer project group had the right mix of skills to accomplish this app? Uh, that's a great question. I, I don't know that it's something that I did consciously. I think that basically different, every time the breakout group was announced, different people would get interested. Some people would come and be able to stick around for a bit. And I think that um, Basically, we managed to scrape by with like a handful of people who were available enough to get this along. I think between one developer and one designer, that was sufficient to like make some progress at all times. It definitely could have gone faster and been better uh, with more help. Um, and at times, we had that. Um, I do think one thing I wish I had done better is communicate our specific needs whenever our we announced the breakout group. I think that would have been really helpful in uh, assembling sort of the right mix or more of a mix of people to help things go faster. Um, I think one of the challenges was definitely that uh, this project, a lot of the tasks required like multiple weeks of commitment. And I think that that was, that's a lot to ask. And so, uh, the number of people who are able to like come in and, and give time for several weeks in a, in a row was was small. Uh, and I don't I think there's a lot I could have done to make that easier for people as well. Um, so I'm like vaguely familiar with ICER, um, but does it contain resources for undocumented immigrants? Um, I know that affiliates in their coalition do provide services to undocumented immigrants. Uh, and that that's a key constituency of the groups that they're trying to help. Um, in particular, I know that some of the resources about healthcare access include facilities that will provide healthcare to undocumented folks. So is there anything that, let's say someone is against some kind of uh, policy that's going on, you know, in the political system, is there anything on there for them to be able to I don't know, get their thoughts or ideas about that into the system itself? Uh, are you asking in terms of communicating those ideas to ICER to sort of try to get traction within ICER? Well, to ICER maybe, but also to maybe their congressman or congresswoman who's in their area or city council or something like that. Got it. Right now, that's not currently in the app. I think that it would be an interesting place to go with it as well, and it's something I'll totally bring up to ICER. I know that there's also a project here that has been really focused on helping make it easier for people to connect with their local representatives, so shout out to that group wherever they are. Do you know how many people are, are expected to use the app? <laughs> uh, short answer, no. I'm, I'm hoping that we'll see the growth in the number of users as we get this out there and publicize it. Uh, and it's something I'm going to be keeping an eye on. And if it 
doesn't seem to be getting traction, then we'll do some work to figure out why. Maybe it's not actually serving their needs, in which case maybe we reassess. Uh, maybe it's just that people aren't finding out about it, in which case maybe we could just do more of a push or figure out ways to make it more accessible. Yeah, do you have any plans to um, test some of the features like with this population before rolling it out um, like an official capacity? Um, we've talked about doing some hands-on user research. I know that there's the Chicago User Testing Group, which I've been intending to re reach out to for like a month and a half, um, which I'd really like to work with them to do some testing. Um, certainly, I would like to do that testing and get feedback. I don't want it to block a rollout uh, because I'd rather, or not rather, in addition, I would like to get sort of the feedback of our people using it in addition to sort of the more qualitative feedback. But that's a great question. I think we should definitely do that, and I, I hope we get to it soon. <laughs> um, you mentioned, like you said, that if this was a, a scoped and engineering project, it might have taken a week or two because it was volunteer. It took longer. And I'm curious if you feel like by working with ICER as a partner, uh, if there was any sort of effort to kind of track or estimate or communicate like the total like mm, quote like dollar value of what you're providing, and if and if going through this process also helped ICER you have more of an understanding of what they were asking for and like the feasibility of that so that for like future projects or additional work they would like know better how to ask for stuff or what to expect is realistic. Um, for the most part we haven't talked about sort of what this would look like in the private market or something like that. They do have more of an understanding about like the cost of maintaining an app because that was something that came up because like this is going to have to live on in some way and it's going to probably require some money. Right now it's running on Heroku, but even like having a domain name, which it should probably have, uh, is going to require 11 bucks a year or something like that. So we've communicated these sorts of details. Um, this is not necessarily what your question was asking, but one thing I found really interesting was actually that um, for some organizations, there's grant money out there to do like innovative things with technology. And one of the barriers to accessing that is not having the resources to do innovative things with technology because the grants like want you to have demonstrated that you've done something. And actually like this project's existence in like ICER's resource bucket makes it easier for them to win funding that could then allow them to hire someone technical. Um, Right now, like they need technical help. If anyone here is interested in like IT stuff for them part time, like they really appreciate it. I think they have maybe a half full time, half a full time person working on like anything remotely technical for them. And so, uh, if this is able to allow them to raise some funding, sort of as uh, along those lines, that would be awesome because they might be able to hire someone full time to do this and like help with their email server and stuff like that. <laughs> so this was a great example of a project where um, you got in touch with, you had an idea and you got in touch with a community organization. Um, and I remember at the beginning, because uh, thanks for the shout out, I was involved at the very beginning, um, that you know it's kind of like ICER saying, who are you and what can you do, kind of an attitude. And then at some point, Maybe the lights went on in their heads. <laughs> I but what was your relationship like, and how did it evolve through the project? Um, I actually don't remember that phase. I feel like they came to us pretty like open to us, uh, or, or excited about our, our, our ability to help them execute on something that they had an idea for. And I think that overall, it's been a very positive relationship where they've been very helpful. I feel like the back and forth has been pretty good, especially as things evolved. I think um, having a conversation about should we include this is something that we've gotten better at over time, which I'm really happy about. Um, and I had one other thought that I lost, and it's gone. <laughs> um, but I feel like overall the relationship has been really good and very collaborative, and um, they've been super receptive, and I'm really excited to have gotten to work with them this much. Oh. I remembered. Um, one thing that I think I should have been doing from the beginning and took me a, a couple months was like, as a volunteer project, this like had significant periods of downtime where like it wasn't making notable progress for like a month or two. And 
Um, when I wasn't updating them on like where things were, and that put me in a position where I was like afraid to email them to say, here's where things are now, after like not saying anything for two months. And I just started trying to get in the habit of emailing once a week to say, like, here's the status of the app right now. And sometimes that was, I haven't had time to work on this, or no one's had time to work on this for a couple weeks. No progress has been made. Like, we're hoping something will happen at this point. Um, but also continued to communicate things like, hey, like, we built this screen last week. Like, what do you think? Um, and I think that getting in that rhythm was really good, both for me and also to like maintain the relationship because it it kept the lines of communication open uh, in a way that I mean everyone's had that email sitting in their inbox for like six months that they know they should have responded to but now it's so awkwardly long that you totally can't send an email and like <laughs> I felt like I'd gotten to that point and I really didn't want to get stuck there so sending a regular email helped me avoid that side note shout out to reply all's email yeah. debt forgiveness day uh, that, <laughs> Good excuse to send awkward emails. Uh, Q1, what needs to be done and in what time frame? Um, there is no time frame <laughs> as soon as we can get things done. Uh, in terms of what needs to be done, um, the main thing in order to get it in people's hands is to for ISU to finish the branding exercise and then to flip that into the app. Um, after that, every extension is sort of as we want to and we'll continue to require uh, chatting with ICER about where they want to see this evolve uh, some things are going to be easier than others. Integrating with their CMS is definitely more work uh, because I think they've been transitioning CMSs, but as a result of the aforementioned lack of full-time technical person, the transition to a new CMS is, of course, taking a long time. Um, and then what are the tools that are used and what skills are needed to help? Um, this is built entirely in JavaScript with React and Redux. Um, a working knowledge of JavaScript is like a good starting point. Anyone who's interested in this project, I'm happy to help them get started and point them in the direction of some tutorials, even with just JavaScript, and answer any questions. If people know JavaScript and don't know React, I can also point you in the direction of some React tutorials. Uh, I think those are actually all listed on the project's GitHub page. Um, and uh, it's being run on Heroku right now. I think probably it should get moved to some sort of like pure static asset thing at some point. What, um, what is the CMS? Um, I don't remember. In case anyone has this arcane knowledge. I think they're trying, I think they are trying to move to Neon CRM, uh, which I believe is like a nonprofit focused CRM on top of Salesforce, something like that. Um, and I do not remember what they're currently on. Okay. 